This is a copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching. Well, I want to welcome you guys to the RCSE Board Policy 12 training for our officers. Um, as you know, we did not have one last year, but we did have one the year before. This year's training is going to be a little bit different in that we are not going to do the same old training that you have had multiple years before. That training is on the website. It is at www.suncityaz.org. And I'm going, to, I'm going to repeat that to you. 20 times during this. Under the recreation tab, there's a pull down and it's clubs. And there you're gonna find everything you need to know about clubs. You're gonna see the 2020 officer training with the slides. And so what you'll find is you can actually print out those slides and go through as we go through. That is a much more comprehensive uh, training on board policy 12. But because I had done that training so many times, like four times in a row, and just added the new things in it, people said, because we, we asked, we sent a note out to the previous presidents and said, what do you like, what don't you like? And they said, we'd like to hear something you know, new. So this is gonna be a mix of the most newest information, and it's gonna have a little bit of the information that is in the previous, but mostly it's gonna be new information, the most important stuff you're gonna need to know. Housekeeping issues. We don't have any dignitaries here today, but if we did, we would be introducing our new board members, any staff members that we needed. Um, if you'll do me a favor and turn your cell phones on vibrate or silent, that would be awesome at this time. If you need to utilize the restrooms, they're out these doors and to both sides. So we have plenty of restrooms. Um, we're gonna ask you to hold all your questions. Because what happens in a training is, Deborah over here will tell me, hey Myrna, my club does this. Then all of a sudden, Oren's hand's gonna come up and Oren's gonna say, but now at our club we do this. And then Donna back here is gonna tell me, hey Myrna, my club does this. And what does that do to your training? It goes from an hour and a half to three hours. So we hold all of our questions. And I, if you have a question specific to your club when we're done, let me know. And we'll be happy to answer it. And you know what? We're always in the Charter Club's office. You call me anytime or call, talk to either one of the girls. And I did say either one of the girls in a minute. That's a very exciting. We'll let you know a little bit later about the new staff members. So when I say hold all the questions, um, we're, it's just come in the back. I have, and we'll get this for you, Deborah and Joanne, if you will hand out to all of these lovely people, if you will hand out a Board Policy 12 and an FAQ, that would be great. The reason we're handing out these FAQs, the fa Frequently Asked Questions, is because we're doing a lot online this year. It's one of our goals. And what we're gonna be doing is, from the questions you ask, we are going to develop a Frequently Asked question page. So like a, you know, a, something that's going to be very helpful to you. And if you ask, how do I do scheduling? It's going to give you a link to click on and it's going to go to scheduling and how to do scheduling. If you ask, what is a COC? It's going to give you a link to the answer to your question. So whatever you write down now, let me know what it is, the kind of questions you want on the website. And you can ask any question or write down any question. The reason there are no handouts or slides this year is because we are doing the training online. And they are gonna be available online. And what we found is we generally do 600 sets of 30 pages, which is an awful lot. And it truly is not the best resource for everybody. 
And last of all, if you wouldn't mind, be respectful of others. Normally, again, we have a lot of chitter chatter and, and, and people can't hear. So again, we talked about what's new. What's new since the last training? New since the last training is we have new chartered club staff. I have a new staff member for the last three years, three and a half years since we separated from the entertainment department. It has been Joanne and I, Joanne turned around and waved to everybody. Hi everybody, that's Joanne. And it's just been Joanne and I since that time. So we're gonna show you the new staff member. COC, some of you go, what is a COC? I'm gonna help you with that in a few minutes too. I'm gonna to explain to you what a COC, but we did some restructuring in that committee. Educational classes. I sent out a survey during the summer and I asked, hey you guys, what is it you want from us? And some of the things that came back were like, hey, we need more education. What is Robert's Rules of Order? And the big one was, how do I deal with disciplinary issues within my club? That was huge. So those are some of the things I'm gonna get into detail a little bit more after that. And attendance records, we'll talk about that. Pandemic language in your RCSC club rules and regulations. That was a big one also because last year what happened was with our pandemic, we got multiple calls on what do we do? We can't get a quorum. There, we can't get all these people in the same room. Can we do videotaping? And so what we did is we said, hmm, how can we help the clubs? How can we help the clubs succeed in continuing to do their business through this pandemic? So, and hold their meetings. So we came up with some pandemic language that needs to go in your rules and regulations. And now here it comes. Your RCSC Charter Clubs team. And this is your, oh, don't you love that? I'm so, I'm so, it's all about me. Up here in the corner, we have Joanne who was just here. Most of you, if you have not already, interacted with Joanne. Joanne has been with me for all five years of her employment. And she was, again, part of the split when we split from the entertainment department. Joanne is right now my right hand. I could not do this thing we do with 127 plus clubs without Joanne. Joanne has been instrumental in helping just to make everything right. Then we have the newest member of our team, which I am so stinking excited about, um, and that would be Deborah Erickson. And Deborah's in the back with me today. Deborah, stand up and wave to everybody. Thank you, Deborah. So that's Deborah. And we're excited because Deborah comes from, let me get out of her face. Deborah comes from Cardholder Services. So she not only is going to be learning all about the clubs, she's going to be able to answer a few of those questions. It's not her job, but if we have questions about like uh, guests and things, you know, guests and do they get privilege cards or whatever, Deborah's going to be able to help us with that. And Deborah is amazing and we're really super duper excited to have her. And then of course there's me in the middle. Um, I'm Myrna, I'm the Charter Club Supervisor. And I have the privilege of working with these two fine women. Many of you know JoLynn Higgins. If you do not know JoLynn Higgins, JoLynn Higgins is not an actual part of my team, but she is an adjunct to my team meaning that she is the communications and marketing coordinator. So when you, she takes care of all of your publicity issues. So her email address is up there. If you may have something you need to have updated, please put website update. Make sure there's something in the subject line. Uh, Sunviews update, whatever that update is, make sure you let her know what it is. Uh, every year, each club gets an annual article. And that annual article is put in the Sun Views. That article is due the month before by the 5th. And I know that sounds really strange. Why a whole month and a half ahead of time? Because JoLynn has to figure out the layout in the Sun Views. So there's very specific information 
on how to do this, but if you need to talk to JoLynn about it, by all means, give her a call. The other interesting piece about this is, again, you can go to www.suncityaz.org on the recreation tab, pull down clubs, and there is the list of when your annual article is due. So all you have to do is look at the clubs and alpha order clubs, and it'll be there. Joe Lynn helps you with your club events, the directory, any of your annual articles, and then Sun City Gives Back. Sun City Gives Back is a fairly new program that we've had just for the last couple of years, but then again, our pandemic came in, it kind of, kind of squashed the momentum on it. If your club does something that's charitable, uh, for instance, we have a sewing club that makes clothes for the children out at Luke. That's charitable work, and that's worth everybody knowing that they do that. We have another club that makes lap blankets for our veterans. That's worth knowing about. Then we have another club that when they first initially started, they wanted to do a lot of charity work directly with our cardholders, um, the citizens of Sun City. So what they did is they decided they would go out and they would help those that were infirmed or that could not take care of their own yards. So they actually went out to the worst of the worst yards and they cleaned those yards up for these people that couldn't do it themselves. So that was definitely newsworthy. So that was something else that Joe Lynn works with. If you have them, please contact us. If you're gonna be doing something in the community, let us know because we really want to showcase. We wanna show how amazing everyone in Sun City is and all of our clubs. Joe Lynn also is in charge of your club website. Hopefully everyone knows that part of being a charter club is you have your own club website. We ask you for the initial information and for updates, but we are the system administrators for that, and anytime you need a change, you just let us know, and we will make sure that those changes go in on the website. And if you have an additional website, we can link that to the additional website. So it's really wonderful, again, go in. I encourage you to look at your website and see, because I had somebody yesterday who said, ours is like six years old. And I said, have you seen it lately? Well, no. Well, go in and update it. Because it had like three presidents ago, their information on it. We don't monitor those. Those are your websites, we're gonna let you monitor them. In your president's packages that came out is a web form, a web date up form. Update web form. Anyhow, so we've got that in there. And again, if you don't have that for some reason, it's at the www.suncityaz.org recreation pull down tab club setup forms. It's right in there. Um, and there's JoLynn's more information. Let's talk about what's new. How many of you know what a COC is? A couple, okay. COC is a club organization committee. The club organization committee is a committee that is a liaison between the chartered clubs and the RCSC board of directors. So if there are issues or something in board policy that just isn't quite right, we can take it to the board of directors and say, we'd like to have this reviewed. We would really like to have this reviewed. In the past, in their previous responsibilities in the past, is each club was assigned a COC, which was the representative from the committee. That person is a volunteer from our, com from our community. They are not paid, they are just like each one of you. They've just chosen to help on this committee. And in the past, we've had several directions in my eight years here where they've gone. It's gone from, when I first got here, they went from Board Policy 12A to Board Policy 12 because Board Policy 12A was very restrictive. And the club said, hey, we're, you know, we're big kids, we can handle our own club. You know, we can run our club. We don't need you to run our club for us. So we took a time for it to be less restrictive and came up with Board Policy 12. And the COCs at that point in time had less responsibility. Through the years and different chair people, every single year we get a different chair, um, they have different goals for the committee. 
So we have got these members of the community that are ever, ever evolving. And it was stay away from the clubs. Let them call you if you need them. You know, if they need you, they'll call you. Then it was be involved, go to your board meetings, go to your member meetings, go to such and such and such and such. And we found that the clubs again said, hey, you know, we don't need all that interaction. We don't need all that interaction. We just need you when we need you. And I sent a survey out again, and it was about the COCs, and we said, who do you contact when you have an issue? And over and over and over, there was only two responses that came back, we contact our COC. And those are from presidents of clubs that also used to be COCs and knew what to do with that. So they say, we, we co contact the club's office. We don't want to have to be contacting multiple organizations. So with that being said, we took all of this information and decided, how can we make this committee more relevant without getting rid of it? And what we came up with is a new focus. So right now, their focus is to act as a liaison or a mediator for clubs who encounter code of conduct issues, whether it's club members versus club members or club members versus their executive board. Because we found that club members are saying, well, it's that darn president and nothing's going to happen. So we said, okay, what can we do here? So we have, you will we will still be your, meaning the Char Charter Club's office, we will still be your main uh, co or conduct, God, code of conduct, you're still your main communication line. And if you have an issue with a code of conduct, I'll contact a COC, which now we have COCs that instead of being, you know, one for each club, we have COCs that are a whole genre. So I have two COCs for all of arts and crafts, two COCs. And the reason we did that is because we found that our COCs, like you all, are members of the community and they're in clubs. And we don't want them representing a club they may be a, a member of. So we have an extra. And we also thought we could do the buddy system. So what we did is we buddied them up with a seasoned COC and a newer COC so that they could, ha they could learn from each other. How does this help you? Again, you only have to contact us. You don't have to worry about in which situation you contact a COC. So you're only contacting us. And the great news is it takes it, that onus off of the RCSC, meaning me, to be the heavy hand. Because what happens now is we have these COCs that are educated on peer review and they're educated on the disciplinary uh, process. And it's peers versus, not versus, but peers helping peers through these kind of situations. So we're really excited about the new focus for the COC. We used to also meet every single month. We found out that meeting every single month wasn't you know, productive, so we're meeting quarterly, and that's a great thing. We talked about some of the things that are new. The education programs are new, and I thought this was a great quote from JFK. The goal of education is the advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of the truth. What a great quote for these times. So I thought that would be great. It's interesting because a lot of times what will happen is um, we'll get email, uh, not emails, we'll get people coming in. We'll, Myrna said, you know what, Myrna never said that, but people love to use our names. So if you ever have a question about if that was right, if that was real, if you have that, this, that little feeling, you know, that little gut feeling that says, hmm, call us and we'll let you know if in fact what you're thinking or have been told is correct. Because again, people love to name drop. So, one of the things we found in our survey was that everyone would like to have more education. We talked about it already. But here's the new education programs. 990 Treasurer Training. That's going to be on February 3rd from 1 to 2 and February 7th from 9 to 10. And they're both going to be held in the Sonoran Room. The Sonoran Room is a beautiful room that's over at the Grand Center. And what we're looking for and please go back and talk with your treasurers, because I'll also be sending an email out to the treasurer as well. If your treasurer says, I know how to do that stinking form, it's online, and you can only find it online. It's a government form, so if they can't find it, we'll help them with that. But what we found is that's due any time after January 1st, because it's for December, it's for the year before. 
and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But what we need to do is we need to have those people, those new treasures that are coming in that go, what? Because oftentimes what we find is that from, from year to year, officers do not necessarily give all the information to the new people. There's a password. There's a username. And so if you do not have that password and username, then you've got to go through about 20 questions to get your profile set up. So with that being said, if you have a seasoned treasurer that already knows how to do this, this training is not for them. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing treasurers in, and we're going to say, bring your tablet, and bring your cell phone. And because what will happen is we're going to go on the government website, and that government website is going to send you a code that we're going to need to complete your form. So that's what that's about. Conflict resolution, again, everybody was saying, ah, how do I deal with this person? And I was glad I went through this exercise because what I found is that I ha even I have triggers where something will just really irritate me. And that person knows it. Has everybody heard about pushing buttons? OK. So triggers and buttons are basically the same thing. So this was awesome for me to develop. And I did not develop this complete program. I have to give kudos to my supervisor, Chris Herring. And um, he had done this. And I just went in and, made, and, and, did t and tweaked it a little bit so that it was more applicable for you all. And while I'm on the subject of Chris Herring, I just want you guys to know that I am the luckiest girl in the whole wide world to have Chris Herring as my supervisor because he is, a, he is a whiz. He is incredible at this. I have never seen him in a situation where he could not handle a conflict. And he's just the greatest guy ever. So I'm going to do three of these, three of these. And they're going to be in March. I'm going to do the Marinette Auditorium. I'm going to do Fairway. And I'm going to do the Sonoran Room. So I'm doing one up north, one down south, and one in the middle. So that's kind of what our trainings are going to be like. And unfortunately, um, before the training had to be canceled, this training had to be canceled um, for the further trainings. We had four scheduled because, again, it used to be we had two, morning and an afternoon, two different dates. Now we had gone to morning and afternoon of the same date and morning and afternoon of the same date, one in the north, one in the south, because we wanted you to be able to have that opportunity to be there, and we wanted you to be successful. Um, so that's that. I'm going to do a Robert's Rules of Order simplified. No one in this room needs to be a parliamentarian. For you to have to know everything in Robert's Rules of Order, you're a social club. You're here to have fun. You do not have to know Robert's Rules of Order inside and out. But there are some main pieces to it that you're going to want to have. So that's new also. Now, I was hoping that Chris was going to be staying, because I thought, you know what? Chris can come up here and talk about this. This is new. And it's the easiest darn thing you'll ever do. But our board of directors came and said, you know what? For all these years, we have no idea how the clubs are utilizing their spaces, or the times, or their time frames. And you know, what's happening? We don't have a real idea from the twice annually membership rosters how everybody's doing. So they implemented this. And this is fairly easy in that all you have to do is get your, get your attendance sheet. If you are in, it goes from January all the way to December. It's an Excel format. Think about January 2nd. If you had 10 people in there, all you do is put the number 10 in there. And guess what? This is automatically, all this is going to calculate for you. So you don't have to worry about doing any calculations. Just plug those numbers in. And those are due before the 10th of the next month. Most everyone is doing it right now. And it's for dedicated spaces as well as non-dedicated. It started off as dedicated spaces only. Now the board has said, we've got the dedicated spaces doing it. It's all clubs. This is mandatory. It's board policy. I just tell you what we're doing. Pandemic language. This is not necessarily new, 
because we put this out last year. Again, as I had said, when the pandemic first started, everyone was saying, what do we do? And then this a uh, year ago, January, when everyone was having their meetings and we were full blown into this pandemic, we can't get a quorum. So again, the board came up with this. And the, the initial language, a quorum for charter clubs with club membership up to 100 members shall be 20% of 100 to 400 club members shall be 21 or 10%. Whichever is greater and above 400 shall be 41 or 5%. Whichever is the greater. And here is the new language. Quorums can be reached only in person except in the case of an act of God or pandemic situation where an electronic vote can be taken to reach a quorum. That must be in your rules and regulations for you to be able to send out ballots and get them back electronically. So we know that when you have a membership meeting or you have any business that has to be voted on that change, is changed in your rules and regulations, we know that we have to have a quorum. So by doing this, in the cases of an act of God or a pandemic, and, and we're continuing because there's no, we're not looking like shutdowns, this can happen. So make sure you get that in your rules and regulations. If, only if, you don't have to do it. If your club doesn't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But just know, in those two cases, if it's not in there. So we're just kind of letting you know about it. Now these are some of the older slides, but I, I, think, I think they're worth reiterating. And that is, what, are, what, are, what is the requirement for a charter club? Charter clubs are subordinate groups under the RCSC. RCSC is a 501C4, 444. Um, and that is a IRS designation, and that IRS designation is social welfare, nonprofit social welfare, welfare club. Okay, so, and what that means is a charter club must operate primarily to further the common good and social, general social welfare of the people of the community, and may not operate primarily to promote self or social welfare if its primary activity is carrying on a business with the general public in a manner similar to organizations that operate for profit. What does that mean? That means you're not a business. It means you don't do manufacturing. You do not do that because if you do that, the IRS can come in and not only pull your 501c4, they can pull our CSCs because we're the mother organization. So we ask you to keep this in mind that you're a club, you're not a business. And just kind of, um, how many of you have heard about what happened over in Sun City West with their clubs? Anybody? Okay. This was probably six, eight months ago. The clubs over at Sun City West had a store over on R.H. Johnson, and I always called it the Craft Village, and I thought it was pretty cool myself. But that was before I understood IRS guidelines and what it takes to be a 501c3, 4, and all of those. Well, all of their clubs put their wares into this uh, beautiful marketplace. The beautiful marketplace had its EIN number. The beautiful marketplace had its own Arizona privilege tax number. That's not the way this works, folks. And somebody tattled. Somebody tattled to so the IRS came into Sun City West and said, no, 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 you don't do this anymore. And they shut that, they shut it down right there. Everything had to be taken out of this beautiful showcase because they weren't following the IRS guidelines. And the IRS guidelines is each of you have your own EIN number and you're responsible for that EIN number and what happens within that EIN number. So again, we don't want any of our clubs to be a club that gets tattled on because that's not what we're here for. We're here to have fun. And we always have to keep that in mind. It's, it's, we're here in a community where it's supposed to be fun. We're the original fun city after all, right? Additional charter club requirements. A club with a dedicated space must maintain 50 members at all time. A club with a dedicated space means a wood shop, an artistic stained glass, a um, 
any of those kinds of clubs. Artistic weavers, those are a dedicated space. They have space where they keep their equipment in and so on and so forth. Um, a non-dedicated space is 25 people. And that would be like your social clubs. So make sure that you always have that minimum of 25 people. Uh, clubs, and this goes back a couple of years ago, we do not have to have a president, vice president, a secretary, treasurer any longer. You have to have at a minimum these three covered, which is a president, a secretary, and a treasurer. And I've asterisked that because that secretary and treasurer can be one person. As long as the president oversees the secretary slash treasurer, and so the fox isn't guarding the hen house, you know what I'm saying? We've got some counterbalance here. So that's another requirement that changed two years ago. You have to have two executive board meetings annually. So when you turn in your schedule, your, your facility usage schedule, make sure that you have that written on there, where the, what dates you're having them. You know, the truth is, you might not have it on that date, and you may not have it on RCSC property. It may be at your president's home. And that's fine, as long as you write on here that you're having your two and it's on off-site. We're not going to tell you where to have your meetings when it comes to that. Again, two meetings per year. Then you have to have an annual membership meeting, and most of the time your annual membership meetings happen in, in November, December, and they're done by January because we're having new officers coming in, and that's the membership meeting right there that we're, we're going to have to have in our office when you have your new, member, your new officers come in. We need a copy of your minutes with that. And each club has to establish your own rules and regulations. We have, in, we have um, at www.suncityaz.org, under the Recreation tab, pull down clubs. We have a um, suggested grouping of what should be in your, in your rules and regulations. So I've got, I've got rules and regulations that are two pages, and I've got them that are 20 pages. So if you have one of those two pages, I know you're not covering all of these things that we need to have in there. Uh, you, need to, you need to look at that, and the reason the rules and regulations are written the way they are is because, believe it or not, every single rule or suggestion in there is something we've come up with. We don't just come up with this out of our head. It is, in eight years, I have seen just about all, everything. I'm not gonna tell you I've seen it all because there's always something new in the Charter Club's office, and we love that kind of variety. Charter Club membership. And I wanna, I wanna say that our CSC, we're going through this, and you'll go through the other, the other um, film as well. We don't ask a lot of you, believe it or not, for everything that, that is given to the clubs. We don't ask for a ton. But we do want to make sure there are some rules that are followed and that club membership is open to all valid RCSC cardholders. What does that mean? It means someone that has a regular RCSC card like yourselves or a privilege card. And a privilege card is most likely someone who is short term or who is leasing their own home. It's someone who is not on the deed. There's no special type of membership for RCSC clubs. So, that means if Mrs. Johnson, who's been a member of your club for 90 years, that's a long time, I haven't been here 90 years. Mrs. Johnson, who's been in a, a club member for 20 years, moves into an assisted living facility but doesn't have a card, she cannot be an honorary member of your club because she is not a valid RCSE card member. So we're not being hard-hearted or anything, that, but you do have to be a valid RCSE card holder. Um, there's nothing like, oh, some, someone said you asked, hey, we're going to make him an honorary member because he knows a lot about whatever our subject is. We're not going to do that. So we talked about that. And only club members can hold office. One of the questions that I get asked is, can a privilege card member hold office? They're a valid RCSC card holder. It's just the difference of a privilege card or not. So in your clubs, they can. A privilege card member, the only difference between a privilege card member 
and a, your, regular, uh, your regular card member is that privilege card people, again, are probably leasing, they're not on the deed, and they cannot vote at the regular big RCSC board meetings, they cannot vote, they cannot come forward and talk because they're not deed, deeded owners. So, but they can be in your club. Also, one of the questions I get a lot of times is, can a snowbird be a uh, officer? It's up to you. That's up to you guys. How you run your club when it comes to your officers is certainly up to you. As long as there's somebody that can be communicated with. So again, it's really gonna be up to you. Each club member has only one vote. And unless it's written in your rules and regulations, they have to be there to vote in person. To ensure that everyone is a member in good standings, we have twice a year the membership roster that's due. And those rosters are due March 1st and October 1st. Yahoo! So, what happens is we've got the club roster submission, and this is what a club member submission looks like. I only need two columns, that's it. I don't need to know anything else about these people other than these two columns. I need to have their last name, comma, first name, and in the second column I need their RCSC number. I don't, there's so much I don't need because what happens is we in the club's office work in a program called RecTrack. And I know I'm giving you a lot of information that you're going, eh. but so it'll give you an opportunity to understand why there's, there's this time frame and this, this lag between some of the, you turning it in and us getting it back to you. And then cardholder services works in tag. So any of you golf and have to make golf, le, uh, golf tee times, that's tag. And, and cardholder services works in tag. When you bring your 496 in every year, it's real time. You pay it, you're up to date, Everything is, everything is ready. So between rec track and tag, there's about a 48 hour lag. So what happens when you bring this in, we have to have this big formula and put it in that's friendly for tag. And then what comes back, oh, sorry, here's the nose. Here's what I don't want on that. I don't want you to PDF it because if you PDF it, I can't put it in this formula. Okay, so no PDFs, no wrap columns. Meaning if you've got a whole office or your whole membership list is like this, and you got their name, their address, their phone number, their you know, emergency contact, don't just go hide these two all these columns that I don't need. Because what happens is when you send it in, I still have all those columns. And then we have to figure out what's wrong, why it won't go into this system. So make sure you don't wrap your columns. No nicknames. A lot of times, nicknames are for your, ooh, sorry. Nicknames are for your name tags. Because what happens is when we send this in, we, it'll come back to you with the deeded owner's name. It doesn't come back with, you know, Bill Jones. It comes back with William Jones. So we need the deeded owner, owner's name. And the personal information, like I talked about a few minutes ago, we don't need any of that personal information. We don't need any of that. All of that, when it comes in, it's got all this information, and it takes us even longer to try to figure out where the problem is and why TAG won't accept it. No emergency contact. So when we send it in, after we've done all of our gyrations, this is what you're going to get back. And this section here to here is what normally people go, what? What does that mean? Okay, you're gonna see up there on Joan Miller number one, it says her number, her name, and it gives us our, her last name and her first name and it tells you when it expires. So when her card expires, she's currently active. What you should be concerned about are all of these deleted, expired, no privileges, because those are not gonna be counted towards your membership. So it's important that when you get someone who's deleted, this means Daphne Woods probably dropped her lease and no longer has that privilege card. Then we have someone like, 
Let's see. Jan Cummings. Alan Strong is actually the homeowner. But Jan Cummings was doing a lease there, and it says she has no privileges. So the no privileges means she has no privileges on that property. And I want to clear something up right now with you all. Um, we're a senior community. I get that. We understand that. Expired doesn't mean what you think it means in this community, okay? It just means that this person has no longer, she probably has moved completely out of the community. Okay, so we've got that. To help you, we've also got what's called a member validator. Y'all still awake? Okay, I see heads nodding, okay. <laughs> member validator, this is a tool for you. This is a tool for you. And you can find it at www.suncityaz.org under the recreation tab and clubs. And you'll find this when you pull that up. If you're looking at it, it's right over here on the right hand side to log in. This is not the web portal. You're not going to get this information from the web portal. But this is, a, this is a portal for just you, the clubs. And what you will need is your user ID and a password. If you do not have that, please check with your previous president. I have a list of those. I only give that information out to the president or the membership chairperson. Because not everybody needs to be able to get on here and find out information on everybody. So you'll put that in, and then it'll tell you you have member number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you hit the validate. And here's one of the three screens you're going to see. Hopefully, you're going to see that screen right over there that tells us Jan Eck is gr in green is active. She's an active cardholder, so that's great. The orange up here or red will be a no privilege. So what happens when you get a no privilege or a not found is you need to contact that person. You need to contact that person and don't say, hey, did you know you're expired? Nobody wants to hear that again. It's like finding your obituary. You don't want to know about that. So what you'll do is you'll contact that person and say, hey, I think I might have written your card down wrong, your card number down wrong. Can you, re can you let me know what it is? And a lot of times what happens is we have a transposed number or they've moved from one property to a new property and they didn't give you their new number. So it's as simple as fixing it like that, and then you won't have this come up again for them. Club member discipline has become a really big issue. We never used to have as many club member discipline issues as we did, um, but, but the ones that we do have are, are, are getting really big. Um, during, the eight, during April 8th, 2019, the RCSC changed some discipline language to read like this. Um, and I'm not going to read it to you, but again, it'll be on the slide. This should be in every single, every single rules and regulations. Every, I see you touching him. You must, you must be the uh, rules and regulation kind of guy. But anyways, this should be in your rules and regulations, okay? And the important piece of this is don't use this in your clubs as a way of ousting someone because you don't like their personality. That's not what this is for. This is for true conduct, okay? So they, your members need to comply and need to conduct themselves in a manner that is conducive to being in a social environment a good, kind, gentle, social environment. It's important to note that if we get to this point down here where you said, Deborah, we've talked once about the situation that we're having. Um, now I'm gonna write a code of conduct report, which the code of conduct report can be found at where? www.suncityaz.org, recreation tab, so on. That's your first mechanism. You talk to the person. The second time you can say, hey, Deborah, you know what? I, I apparently didn't get, get my message across, but you know, your behavior is really not appropriate for the club. So Deborah has now been written. It, it's in written documentation. Deborah, Deborah's been talked to. Now she's got this written documentation. 
And it happens again, and the, your executive board says, no more. That's it, we're done with you. So Deborah gets a third violation, and the board has said, Deborah, now we're going to give you time to think about this. You have been terminated for 60 days. Come back with a new attitude. Deborah says, you know what? You don't even like me. Orrin doesn't like me. So that's why it happened. So when you tell these people that this has happened, and again, don't use it because it's a personality flaw. We try and work through these things, and we'll use our COCs to help you work through them. But this is really important. A club member disciplined by a club's executive board may submit a written request for an appeal to the board. And this board and this board are different. The board is RCSC board. So they may appeal to the RCSC board and they will follow the process. It's important to know that when you have a code of conduct issue, it needs to be done 30 days from the infraction. Because what happens is if somebody says they want to, they want to appeal and it goes to the board for an appeal, the first thing the board's going to do is they're going to contact you and say, um, I really, not I really, we need your documentation. So document, document, document ill behaviors, okay? Hello, and thank you for stopping by the Charter Club's virtual office. My name is Myrna De Bruin, and I am the Charter Club supervisor. Today, we're going to talk to you about RCSC Board Policy Form 12-8, and that is your annual financial form. This form is due no later than January 31st of each year, and it's basic in-out accounting. And if you have any questions, you're, you can always contact us and we can help you through it. But this form will come in the president's package that your new president will receive every year. Again, it's what I need you to do is I need you to write in pen, use a pen, and I need you to write legibly. You're going to put the club name up here and you're gonna put for the year ending in here the first thing you're going to do is you are going to put your cash in hand where it asks you for the cash in hand, then your cash and your checking. Any savings or savings bonds you may have, any CDs, you'll put that in there as well, and then you're going to total that. Then the next area is income, and that will be your dues or any special money from, say, a white elephant sale that has come into the club. So that's where you're gonna put your income. And then you're going to put your expenses. So you've got your opening balance, your income, and your expenses. And expenses can be anything from your supplies to materials to food, whatever you have your receipts for. And remember to get a receipt for everything. It doesn't matter if it's even a box of donuts. That needs to be accounted for in your expenses. What you'll do then is you're going to total your expenses. Okay, the next area is your opening balance plus your income less your expenses. And I know that sounds a little bit threatening there, but your opening balance plus your income minus your expenses, and that's the total you're going to put in that category. You're going to put your closing balance is going to be whatever cash you have in hand, on hand, then the money you have in your checking. Now minus that, okay, and that total for the total closing balance is going to match what you have under A. So those two must balance when you bring it in. If not, more, most likely Joanne or I will help you through that. Make sure you sign it, and it's going to be for the president of the year that is responsible for this financial statement. Not the new president, but the president for the previous year for this year in balance. And then also the treasurer as well. So make sure you get both of those signatures. Bring it in, no, remember, no later than January 31st, and uh, We'll get you a copy, we'll have our copy, and life will be fantastic. Until we see you again, we'll have a great day. I wanna ask you, just by show of hands, does something like this, would something like this video help you to fill out forms? Do you find that 
it would be beneficial to have somebody that was walking you through each one of these forms and you could just go online and have them help you walk through. Do you got, show hands, how many would, who would like that? Okay, that is again another tool we're looking at working at this year. We've been, we've been tasked with many things this year and now that Deborah is with us, it's gonna free me up to do a lot of this. So you're gonna be able, by the end of this year, and this was a goal for last year, but last year just blew up for every single one of us. But you're gonna find that what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this on a how to fill out each one of these forms. So we're real excited about that for you guys. Scheduling. Many of you have already turned in your 2023 schedules. It's due no later than April 15th. Um, we have, Deb, do you remember how many we have already? It's like 40, 50? We have like 40 plus that we've already received. So let me show you the difference in, in, these, in these pieces. We always do get it a year ahead of time. So right now we're taking 2023 because with 127 clubs plus, we also do the scheduling for all of the departments with the exception of entertainment within our CSC. So we do administration, we do golf, we do bowling, we do um, BNI, so building and infrastructure, we do all of the golf, so all of the leagues for golf, we do all of that. And that comes out to about 17 to 19,000 reservations a year. So that kind of also helps you if you come in and say, hey, I need to change this to such and such a date, and that time frame may be taken because you can imagine again just looking at your schedule how much time you've got scheduled and if you're a smaller club you're thinking oh, that's not bad but when you're a club like lifelong learning or pickleball or the computer club and you have all of these classes and needing these rooms it gets to be it gets to be tight fit in the rooms that we have right now so excuse me Again, one of the most important things you can do is write legibly for us. Please write legibly because if not, we're gonna be making phone calls. Um, but the first piece of it is your regular club, your regular hours and days. The second piece is if it's any different, we've got summer hours on here. We've got sun view hours on here. We've got special events on here. And if you need any help with these forms, by all means, please, please, please come in and see us and let us walk you through and how to do it. And we can even give you copies of the previous forms. So then you've got like a, a template that can help you. Okay, now you're gonna get to go from me to one of my favorite people. And uh... Okay, this is the master setup for Sundial Rec Center. I just wanna go through this with you. Uh, make sure you fill it out in pen, not pencil. Make sure it's clearly written so we can read your writing. Also, make sure you put your phone number down, your contact name, RCS number, the phone number, event date and event hours to and when it stops. And if you need an AV tech, yes or no. That's, we just need to know the information. Also, at Sundial, we do not have round tables. We have six foot tables, card tables, chairs, risers and size. We have coffee pots available and there's, there's also uh, screens that we can pull down if you're going to use a presentation. Uh, let us know if you're going to need a podium or mic, a wireless mic, a projector, computer connection types. There's different computers, there's different connections. We just have to know. The more information we know before the setup is here, it's the better for everyone involved me included. Setup sheets are required four weeks prior to event. We have to have them four weeks prior because there's a lot of uh, staffing issues that we need to uh, make sure we have enough people to do the setup and if it's going to be after nine o'clock it's there's only a couple people here so we can't really make any changes. And this form is to be submitted to the Chartered Club's office, not here at Sundial. 
Obviously, if you have questions, you can come see me, but it has to be filled out for the Carter Club's office. Also, if you have questions with any of this, with the setup, you know, if even if you've been here at Sundial before, if you have questions about electrical, lighting, uh, AV, if you're not going to use Alan and Mike, then come in and talk to me and ask, you know, the questions that need to be asked. Make sure if you're going to set up with a computer that uh, you come in with the computer before the, the time and make sure we can do that. And we have up here on the top of the sheet, it says for East Hall, West Hall, and Main uh, Auditorium, we have the amount of tables and chairs you can, you can put in each hall and the auditorium. So that gives you a better understanding of how many you can seat in a particular place. If it's a big event that you're going to need the auditorium in the East Hall or the auditorium in the West Hall, you just got to let us know so we can figure that out. And again, the setups are due 30 days prior to the event. Thank you for your time. Okay. And one of the things I want to talk about with setups is that we've had multiple clubs that are coming in and they're giving their, set, their setup and then they come in the following week and they give us a new setup and then they come in and they revise another setup. And then the day of, they realize they need more tables or they need less tables, they want us to revise their setup. Okay, we've been really gracious in the past, but we're not gonna be so gracious anymore. They're due four weeks in advance and we know changes happen, we know that. And we're gonna do our very best, but please, please be respectful of our staffs here because once these tables are set, they're set. We don't want you moving them. That's not your job. We have staff to move it, but we want to make sure your setup is done in time. And make sure they come again to, this, to the uh, Charter Club's office. Joanne and Deborah are going to be in charge of, Deborah's going to be in charge of the south of Grand, and, and Joanne's going to be in charge of north of Grand. So we're going to have, be able to give you a little bit more personalized uh, attention. So. When we talk to you about your setup, it's because we've done a lot, a lot of setups with 17,000, with 17,000, uh, um, what am I trying to say? 17,000 reservations, setups, thank you. So if we tell you we can't do something, it's not because we're mean. It's because we have to, file, we have to follow all of the fire codes and safety rules so if the aisles aren't wide enough, we have to make sure, you know, and that's one of the things, we've seen so many pitfalls because you get a room full of people and you squish them in there and the tables are too close when you put chairs on both sides. You have this table and these chairs, then you have this table and these chairs and these people are backing into each other. So our staff know exactly how many chairs and things can be put into a room and what a good configuration is. And if you have any questions, come in and, and let us help you. Let us help you achieve the kind of event you want to have and the environment that you want to have. Again, we have a lot of folks that will deliver to the, to the uh, facility. That's not where it goes. It comes to our office. And the reason is because we keep copies of everything for your future needs as well. And this is a tricky one. It's called club donations. And I want to talk about club donations for just a quick minute. A lot of clubs give RCSC a club donation. And the reason they give a club donation is because RCSC charter clubs are very special um, in that they get free advertising in the Sun Views. They get free advertising. We maintain a website for them. We um, do staff setups. We're here to assist you at all times. And you might say, well, that's your jobs. But that's not necessarily true. It is our job. But, and, I'm gonna, and I already have, and I know another thought in your head is, well, you know, you get 496 for that. The 496 that each one of us pays every year does not have anything to do with the fact that you get free electricity, the fact that you get free setups, the fact that you get all of these perks for being a charter club. That goes specifically to maintaining our state-of-the-art facilities. And that's what that goes to. So I just want to give you an idea. 
what these funds are used for and how it impacts everybody. When an RCSC cardholder comes in and says, hey, I need to use a room, this is what they are going to pay. So this is the perk you're getting. Social Hall 1, the rental fee for Social Hall 1, and we do everything in a minimum of four hours, is $250. So the first thing is they're going to rent it for $250, but they're going to give us a, a deposit in case something happens. They have a wild party, whatever. So that's per occasion. So the total rental on Social Hall 1 is $475 per year, or excuse me, per event. So say your club only meets once a month, just once a month. Here's the perk. You just got $475 times 12 months is $5,700 free that a cardholder, a regular cardholder doesn't get. And that's because you're a charter club office, you're a charter club. If you meet, that's if you meet monthly. If you meet once a week, and we have a lot of clubs that meet more than once a week, just once a week, 475 times 50, $23,750. The cost to you is zero. So this is why some clubs, most clubs, will give a small donation to RCSC based on what they do, how often they meet. What are those used for? That money is used for Bell Fun Fair is coming up. Every, club, every single center can have a fun fair. Bell Fun Fair is coming up. So what happens is they, a fun fair is where everybody who is located at, that, at Bell has the opportunity for one day, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning till about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and we open it up to the whole public. All of RCSC, and generally we get some people coming in that may want to think about living it, our, you know, in Sun City. So that's a whole day to showcase everybody at Bell. And there are costs, costs that are associated with that. And those costs are marketing costs. So the cost of flyers, the cost of maps, the cost of signage, all of that. Those donations go to offset that, and we will pay for those. The cost of advertising in the independent, this big open house, we will pay for that. And there's a form that you fill out and you bring me the um, quotes from the paper or the printer or whatever, and based on those donations from that center, that's whether we're going to be able to cover those costs. And if those costs aren't covered by those donations, then the clubs end up having to come up with costs anyhow. Um, a big one is the cost of um, the arts and crafts fair. Now, some of you say, well, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pinnacle club. That doesn't matter to me. It, we do not look at the money that you give us. We look at arts and crafts only. So if there's not enough money, and that generally runs around $3,000, all the advertising that goes into the arts and crafts fair. So that tells you that if your club can give a donation to help offset that, it goes, it goes back into advertising again for your clubs. But I just want to make sure that everybody knows that's an incredible perk. If you meet once a week, that's an incredible perk. <clears throat> this is a slide that, that I've had up here forever, and it's a 911 calls incident reporting. <clears throat> Every club should have this in their printed and in their club room. Since this time, we have come up with another matrix, which is fabulous, and it is on the website. It's called nine one, uh, emergency versus non-emergency and what to do. And I would encourage each of you to print that off and put that in your club room. We actually have it as a management directive for our staff. And what we did is I said, this is fabulous. Let's, let's tweak this so that it's good for clubs. So what it does is it tells you when you need to call, what is a non-emergent situation, what is an emergency situation, when you, call, when you call the popo and when you don't call a popo. So if, we find, if you, you're walking into your club room and sitting in front, and this is just a reality, folks, and you find needles, use bottles, drug bottles, paraphernalia, whatever, it tells you what to do. It tells you, first of all, don't touch it. Contact and who to contact. It tells you 
And this other column, that if you have somebody coming into your, into your place, maybe one of our homeless people, or you have someone who is absolutely outrageous and is screaming and yelling and you feel threatened, really feel threatened, what are you going to do? You're going to call 911. Okay? But the important thing is, it tells you in these, all these different situations what to do. So I encourage you to print those off and in a meeting, talk to your folks about that. Because incident reporting is a lot different than your code of conducts. Incident reporting is slips, falls, things like that. Okay? Um, and then again, it really, you gotta know who, what, where, and when. We've been taught that since we were little ones. Um, who, who completes these incident reports when we have them? Again, slip, fall, injury. The person involved, if the person involved, they're the first person that should fill this out. If you got somebody going on via ambulance because they just fell out and lost consciousness, they're obviously not gonna do that, but you're gonna wanna gather as much information as you can. So the individual involved, witnesses. Witnesses are very important. Now, witnesses are not just people that were in the room, but people that saw, the people that saw that person fall the person that fell out, the person that was sitting there and just passed out, the people that see it, so that we have a complete picture of what happened. Um, and if there's a club officer or a monitor present at the time, again, if they, only if they witnessed it. If you have something like a fall or um, a trip or whatever, we need pictures right then. It's just like a crime scene investigation. We need to know what happened? You know, did the person have a flip-flop on and do like I do half the time when I drag, drag my feet and I trip myself? Or was there a trip hazard, hazard there? So we need to know just the facts, not your interpretation of what happened, but just the facts. So if you can get pictures, it's always really, really good for us. Again, the in person involved, any witnesses, monitors. Um, where to send it? Of course, you, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take care of that person. Bar none, that person is the most important person in, in that room at that point in time. We want you, if it needs it, call 911. Call 911. The second thing we need you to do is we need you to alert RCSC staff because at, we, at our centers, if the aid car or and of course, the fire department come, they're gonna to need to know where to come. So our staff need to be out in the parking lot bringing them in and telling them where. Because you imagine having an emergency here and nobody knowing where to, be, where to be. So have one person that's taking care of the person, the next person's gonna say, Oren, I need you to go tell the staff. Get them out here. So you know, have someone in charge and have somebody pointing and doing what the things they need to do. Have somebody else on the phone with 911. Whatever you've got to do to make that person comfortable and get them taken care of is number one, but let us know immediately thereafter. And you need to get the report to us within 24 hours. Of course, it's business working days. We don't expect if it happens on Saturday morning for you to be there Saturday or Sunday to get it to us. And let's talk about service animals. I wanna talk a little bit about service animals versus emotional support animals. Okay, a service animal is a dog that has been individually trained to do and work, to do work. They are performing an actual task for a person with a disability. RCSC does not recognize emotional support animals as a service animal. So when an animal comes on, our, sta our staff will ask the following question. I had this happen at the Arts and Crafts Festival, and I had to talk with this young lady, this lady and her son about their animal. And as I walked up, her son says, it's a Chawini. And I said, oh, and what a cute Chawini it is. You know, and that kind of took him a little off balance. And, and the son pipes up telling me, oh, it's her emotional support dog. So I now know it's an emotional support dog. It's not a service animal. It's an emotional support dog. And I said, okay. And I wanted to make sure that I covered all bases. And I said, well, what does, 
what is your dog trained to do? What task does it perform for you that would make it a service animal? Oh, it goes and gets my blanket when I'm, when I'm sad. OK. All right, he said, that's when I knew it was not a service animal. It truly was an emotional support dog. And I had to say, RCSE does not recognize this. Were they happy with me? No. But the other things that have come up with, we've come in with, is we've had people come in and say, well, I can't leave my little dog at home. It depends on me. We're not a babysitting service. No animals are allowed on RCSE property. If an animal comes in and it's not on a leash, if it's licking everybody and it's just really sweet, that's super. But that dog belongs at home because it's also a trip hazard. Okay, only service animals are allowed on RCSC property. Just because it wears the vest doesn't mean it's a service animal. We all know that. Just because somebody says, I have paperwork, doesn't mean anything. You, I am allowed to ask, you are allowed to ask the question, what specific task is your animal trained to do to help you you cannot ask them about their disability. And if somebody throws ADA in your face, we are ADA compliant, but we are also a private organization. So if you ever need help with someone who refuses to leave or takes their animal out, and, and again, we're not being, everything we do is for the safety of our card holders because who is Sun City? You are Sun City. And if not to protect you, what are we here for? Uh, I want to thank each of you for coming to this and being part of my audience and allowing me to do this. Uh, again, this is going to be on mid next week on the website, www.suncityaz.org. I know. <laughs> Recreation tab, <laughs> pull down clubs. So this will be on there, and I encourage each of you to go ahead and have all of your officers review. If they've been to my trainings before, they don't need to review the 2020, but if they have not, please have them review 2020, because again, that is much more comprehensive than what you've just seen. And then have them do this. I will tell you that we are going to, because it's mandatory, the trainings are mandatory, we are going to be sending along a request to have you let us know that you have watched it. You have all signed in, and if you haven't signed in, Deborah's back there, just make sure Deborah gets your, your name and your club. And so we'll know which officers did not. And we're not doing that as a, like, we're not doing that to be heavy handed. But what happens is, again, someone will say, well, we didn't know that. Or, or we have situations where Things keep coming in incorrectly, and we'll say, but we talked about that in training. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go back to the training. Let's go back to your training. Oh, I see you didn't actually get to see the training. Here's your training. So it's all about the educational piece of this and making everyone in this room be as um, successful as possible. We want you to be successful. Hey, I, I've, I've been doing clubs for eight years. I love the clubs. Our office is here to help you any way we can. So anytime you need any of the service of myself, Joanne, or Deborah, please let us know. And um, if you wouldn't mind on those questions, just if you don't have the questions today, our office is located at Lakeview in the Charter Club's office. And you can drop it by or scan it and send it to me. And we really look forward to doing great things with you all. And um, I wish you just the absolute best 2020. Thank you for being here. This is a copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.